So let's take a look at inquiry and uh, processes for science. So we have a few questions that uh, we're going to be able to we try to answer uh, during this video. So after asking a question and making an observation, what are the next steps in the scientific method? So we want to be familiar with the scientific method uh, and all of the steps and in what order they show up. Uh, an example of a chemical hazard, the time zones, how many are there? Pretty straightforward question. Um, and the internet is an example of merging science and technology. Can you name another, like another example of the merging of science and technology? So we'll go over that too. All right. So once you have all that stuff down, you'll be in pretty good shape. Okay, so personal health and what we need to know about personal health that we might be asked about. Uh, students should be learning about the importance of nutrition and types of foods to eat, as well as the hazards of substance abuse. Uh, diseases should also be briefly studied and the importance of regular exercise should be emphasized. So those are really the four big points, nothing complicated to understand there, but those are the four big points of what a student should be learning in the personal health portion of their science classes. As we look at the, uh, the scientific method, uh, after asking a question and making an observation, the next significant step in the scientific method is uh, observation question, of course, first, then hypothesis, then experiment, then accept or reject the hypothesis. Okay, so I believe the question that we were asked was after asking a question and making an observation, what are the next steps? Okay, so hypothesis would be the answer there. That is the next step. And so you just want to make sure that you have this, these are listed here right in order, that uh, you have this order down because uh, you will be questioned about that and there's no reason to get it wrong. Uh, it's pretty straightforward and stuff you've probably seen for a long time since you were in elementary school. Okay, looking at some basic hazards that we want to be familiar with. Uh, natural hazards are major storms. That's what a natural hazard will refer to. Um, chemical hazards are going to be things more like pollution. That would be like the number one example, right? And so you could easily imagine what could a, a test question be, right? Pollution is an example of, you know, A, natural hazards, B, chemical hazards, C, biological hazards, D, social hazard, something like that. Okay. Anyway, pollution is a very common, the last one as far as chemical hazards. Um, examples of biological hazards are things like pollen or bacteria um, and social hazards could be something like transportation or safety in the workplace. Right? That's what you would see from a social hazard standpoint. That's really all you got to know there. Okay, as we move to time, time zones, uh, this is a very, very straightforward question, right? How many time zones are there? Uh, the way they come up with this is that a complete rotation of the Earth, which is 360 degrees of longitude, takes 24 hours. The time zone system consists of 24 time zones that reflect the 24 hours of the day. So with uh, history and technology, uh, science should be taught within the context of history so that students can understand some of the practical applications of what they are learning. For example, science is a big part of tools and technology that were built during the Industrial Revolution. Right. And so, you know, like what would be an example of that, uh, like the steam engine, right, changed really the history of the world um, and the way trade worked. Right. And so being able to understand both like the science part, but also why it mattered from a historical standpoint is a big deal. Um, and then finally, we have science and technology. So we want students to understand how science and technology are connected. The assembly, assembly line, for example, in and of itself had nothing to do with science or technology, but rather was an innovative business idea. The internet dramatically changed how we communicate with each other. The airplane changed how we travel. The steam engine, which I just mentioned, enabled a wide range of manufacturing machinery to be powered. And so all of these are really a combination of science and technology and usually like a resulting business. Uh, and so I believe that connected to a question, right? That last one down there, 
the internet is an example of the merging of science and technology. Can you name another? Well, we just named four of them. And so you might want to think for yourself, make sure you have those in your mind so that you're just familiar with being able to recognize that merging. And we went through all of these questions and now you might want to take a second and just hit pause and make sure you can answer all these questions for yourself. And if so, you are good to go on this section.